So how should I protect myself from those who intend to harm me? Sometimes I can be affected by a jinn because I'm unclean myself. I'm not interested in prayer. I'm not interested in the proper dress code. I'm not interested in, you know, things that I'm supposed to be doing. I have no link with the Quran, no link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then I get affected by the jinn because my life is dark anyway. I lead such a dark life. Subhanallah. And now the darkness, I'm affected. Not necessarily someone did something, but it's my lifestyle. Every day I'm in the club, I become sick. Person on drugs, they get affected by the jinn also at a certain time. Why? Because their life is full of disobedience of Allah every day, day in, day out. So, and what do they become? They become the comrades of the devil. Whoever turns away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the remembrance of the most merciful, we appoint for them a devil to be their companion. The devil becomes a companion of such a person. Why? They don't have good companions. But when people inflict you with harm, and you have, for example, been affected by black magic and so on, there is a cure. In fact, we should be protecting ourselves before we are affected. If you are affected, you are to blame. Why didn't you protect yourself by the protection taught by Muhammad ﷺ? He taught you how to protect yourself. Why did you not protect yourself? Simple. What did he say? Ayatul Kursi, morning and evening, if possible, after every prayer. Morning thrice, in the evening thrice. After Fajr, after Salatul Maghrib. The problem is we didn't get up for Fajr and we couldn't, bother to be, we couldn't be bothered to read our Maghrib. That's the problem. Ayatul Kursi is a verse in the Quran, Suratul Baqarah. We read it thrice. Take your time. It will take you five minutes to do what I'm telling you. Five minutes in the morning or ten and five minutes or 10 in the evening. A total of not more than 20 to 24 minutes in 24 hours. To do what? To protect yourself. From who? From the devil. From everything evil. So, then you read the Mu'awidat, the last verses of the Quran. The last two surahs of the Quran, minimum two, you could read three. قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٌ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقُ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ We read them thrice each, morning and evening. Similarly, you ask Allah's protection using the words that were used by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. أعوذ بكلمات الله التامات من شر ما خلق. I seek the protection of Allah. I seek refuge in all the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evil that he has created. Oh Allah, can you protect me from all the evil that you've created? We repeat that dua thrice. Bismillah in the name of Allah. Alladhi la yadurru ma'asmihi shay'un fil ardi wa la fis sama'i wa huwa as-sami'ul alim. In the name of Allah. By whose name nothing can harm me in the skies or the earth. He is all hearing, all knowing. That dua repeated thrice, morning and evening. And then see what happens. Nothing will come close to you. Then if something happens to you, it's definitely not connected to the jinn and it's not connected to any of these superstitious things. It's perhaps just a medical problem. The problem with us, we don't read this. Morning comes, we just get up and rush to work. There was no salah and nothing happened. Evening comes, we couldn't be bothered about anything. Even if you have been affected, continue to read these duas. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was affected at one stage according to many ahadith that make mention of it. Why? Not because he deserved it, astaghfirullah, but because Allah wanted to teach us a lesson. To say when something like this happens to you, if it happened to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, look at how he dealt with it. Did he go to people to say this and to say that? No. He struggled for 30 days. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the last two surahs of the Quran, Falak and Nas, as a result of what happened. There was a man known as Labid ibn al-Asam al-Yahudi, who took the hair of the Prophet sallallahu and tied it into knots, and put it on a comb and tied it in knots and blew into it. This is why anyone who ties the knots and blows into the knots has engaged in black magic. Be careful. It removes you from the fold of Islam. But don't do something un-Islamic to save yourself. What else is beneficial? We have the leaf of the cedar tree. The leaf of the cedar tree. You can crush it. You can bathe with that water. You can 
even drink that water. It is said to be healthy, beneficial. You know, today a lot of the people have green tea. They take the leaves of a tree, they take green tea, not green tree. And so, so many different types of drinks. But at the same time, some of these are really beneficial, not only for your health, even for your spiritual self. You know, when you have a strong body, when you are healthy, you are a stronger believer at the same time. Then we have the date. Dates are very healthy, rich in iron. There is a specific date known as Ajwa. The Hadith makes mention of it. It's a small round black date. It's not so sweet. If you have seven of those every morning, the Hadith says you'll be cured from all disease and sickness and protected from magic and so on. Similarly, raw honey is absolutely beneficial. Did you know that? Similarly, extra virgin olive oil cold pressed is very healthy for you you can either rub it you can have a little bit of it you can exchange the cooking oil that you might be using for that you can have it in your salad you can have it in whatever way it is beneficial from the hadith similarly it when you look at the water of zamzam if you have some of it have a little bit of it now and again it's powerful it will it will help you in every single way there is something known as the black seed habbatu sauda have it there is a way of having it either in the oil form, very little of it, or in the little grains that you have, very few of them. You can rub it as well. Very slightly, not much of that. It's very strong. But that helps you. It's from the hadith. Habbatu Sauda has shifa and cure in it, this black seed. Another powerful way of curing yourself is cupping. You know what is cupping? Subhanallah, hijama. That's what it's known as. To remove the dirty blood from your body by creating small cuts in a professional way. Don't just do a back alley job. Get it done properly. Try and learn about the days it's supposed to be done. The odd nights to the second half of the, the Islamic month or the lunar calendar. It's better. So these are some of the ways of curing yourself. It's important for us to know this because you continue doing this and you will find the eradication of the effects of the magic on you. You will find slowly but surely you will be healed. With hijama, they say it is so helpful, it can actually chase away a jinn if you've been possessed by a jinn. It can actually do that for you. And then you need to engage in a lot of dua. Call out to Allah, cry to Allah, call out to Him a lot. Sometimes Allah allows you to be affected because He wants you to soften up to Him. You have people who are hard, nothing stops them. They are tyrant. They are, you know, people who are too, too bent in their dirty ways and habits. And Allah wants to soften them. They are too proud and arrogant. And, and then they are bashed with something of this nature. They have no option but to cry to Allah to cure them. No option. Who was that? That was Allah softening you. So become soft. You know, when Allah tests you and you become softened, it's a very good sign. It's a very good sign. But when Allah tests you and you become even harder, it's the worst thing that you could do. Then we have the recitation of the Quran at large. Surah Al-Baqarah in particular is powerful against the devil. Did you know that? The last few verses of Surah Al-Baqarah. Going to the end. You will find they are powerful. They are made mention of in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. La al-batala. You know, the shaitan do not enter a house where Surah Al-Baqarah is read. So learn to read it. People say, can I just put on a cassette or a CD and so on, the radio and whatever? That may help you, but the true help will come when you yourself take the time to sit down and read. Sit down and read. Similarly, your adhkar. How many times do you praise Allah in the day? How many of us, the day passes and we haven't said, Oh Allah, I love you. Oh Allah, I praise you. All praise is due to you, oh Allah. What, have, what haven't you blessed me with? Oh Allah, I love you. How many of us have said that? How many of us have actually said, Subhanallah, thinking about it? Just when you're walking, just when you're doing anything, Alhamdulillah. You sit and you look at the food and you start thinking of the poor people across the globe. You know, you turn the tap on the shower here at this hotel, for example. And you know, it is so, so beautiful that a person who's not conscious of Allah might just want to stay there for an hour. 
Because why? A oh, lovely shower, the pressure of the water, the temperature. When you start thinking about people who haven't even seen that type of water in the last 10 years, you quickly turn it off. You say, oh Allah, thank you. You allowed me to bath. I didn't waste time. Five minutes, I was out. Allah, thank you. There are people who haven't had that. Look at the clothing you have. There are people who can't afford the people who don't have. Have you ever said, Alhamdulillah, Ya Allah, you gave me clothing, Alhamdulillah, and walk away. Or while you're walking. That will protect you from the devil because when the devil knows you are connected to Allah, the devil moves away. The closer you are to Allah, the further you will be from the devil. It's like a seesaw relationship. Do you know that? You cannot be close to the devil and to Allah at the same time. You cannot. You are either close to Allah, so you are away from the devil or vice versa. You've got to choose.